Professor Dave and Chegg here. We've been learning about acids and bases, and we've looked at lots of different acids, both strong and weak. But until now, all of the acids we've seen have been monoprotic. This means they can only transfer one proton. But there are also polyprotic acids, or acids that can transfer more than one proton. So let's examine these as well. Again, something like hydrochloric acid is monoprotic because it contains only one hydrogen atom. Once it transfers a proton, there is no more hydrogen left. Some acids contain more than one hydrogen atom, but only one of them is acidic. Once it is transferred, it can no longer act as an acid. But some acids can transfer more than one proton. An example of this is carbonic acid, or H2CO3. This is a diprotic acid, meaning that it contains two acidic protons. It can deprotonate twice in succession, first giving the bicarbonate anion, and then again to give the carbonate anion. Each of these deprotonations has its own associated Ka value, as the first proton is much more acidic than the second. Ka1 is 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7, while Ka2 is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11. Some acids can even be triprotic, meaning they can deprotonate three times. Phosphoric acid, or H3PO4, is such an acid. Here are the three relevant equilibria and their associated Ka values. As we can see, the first proton is much more acidic than the second, by five orders of magnitude, and the second is another five orders of magnitude more acidic than the third. All of this complicates things like pH calculations quite a bit, as we can't simply take a Ka value and do a simple calculation. Phosphoric acid will produce a certain amount of hydronium by virtue of its first deprotonation, but it will then generate more hydronium upon its second and third deprotonations. And for certain acids, we must consider all of the relevant equilibria in determining the hydronium concentration in solution. However, in the case of a 5-molar solution of phosphoric acid, it is the case that the second and third deprotonations are negligible. We would set up the ice box for the first equilibrium, plug in 5 as the initial concentration and zeros elsewhere, and then assign the relevant change and equilibrium values. We could again make the simplifying assumption to the denominator, do some arithmetic, and we get 0.19 molar as the hydronium concentration. This gives us a pH of 0.72. Then we understand that the solution is also 0.19 molar in H2PO4 minus, since that is the other product of the first deprotonation. And given that the Ka2 is on the order of 10 to the negative 8, we can see immediately that not enough hydronium will be generated to make a difference in terms of the pH. Sulfuric acid is an example of a diprotic acid that is a strong acid for its first deprotonation to produce the bisulfate ion, but a weak acid for its second deprotonation to produce the sulfate ion, with a Ka of 0.012. And again, for most solutions, the second deprotonation will be negligible when compared with the first for any relevant calculations. We now have an understanding of what polyprotic acids are and the equilibria that describe their successive deprotonations. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.